get your hands dirty if you're going to achieve the impossible. Hey there, welcome to Movie Phones Unscripted. I'm Hugh Jackman. I'm here with uh, Christian Bale to talk about our new movie, The Prestige. So you guys have sent us in a whole lot of questions. So uh, I'm going to ask Christian questions. He'll ask me some from you guys and some that that are just our own questions. So let's get started. Uh, From Lacey Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, this is from me to you. Oh, you going first? This is Christian. Sorry, Christian. Yeah, okay. The Prestige is about (laughs) antagonistic rivals. Yes. How did this affect your off-screen relationship <laughs> with Christian. Well, <laughs> we hated each other. We hated each other, except when we did press. And then we yeah. sort of find that we kind crap. of get on all right. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, all right, great to see you. Truth of the matter is, uh, we did hate each other, right? Off-screen and on. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. Why is that? You're finally getting your hands dirty. That's what a good trick costs, Jangir. Risk, sacrifice. The sacrifice, I'm afraid, is all going to be yours, unless you give me what I want. Which is? Your secret? You have my notebook. Useless without the keyword. Write down your method, Mr. Borden. Where's mine, you know? Life! Stop asking your dick. Balloon! You hear me? No, we actually, boring to say, but we both got little kids, same age almost. And we had a couple of play dates, birthday parties, yep. hung out. So for both of you, for both of you, Hugh. Santiago, Buenos Aires, Argentina. I love Argentina. I love Buenos Aires. So how did training with Ricky Jay help prepare for your roles as magicians? Have you found yourselves more popular at cocktail parties? I, I don't know that I've ever been popular at cocktail <laughs> parties. Not true. At all. But, um, but <laughs> I, I, I did, I did kind of have aspirations from, from, from uh, 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 finishing this movie that I would at least be able to entertain at like children's parties or something like that. But I would be the absolute most useless crap <laughs> entertainer ever because, as you know, <laughs> they taught us the beginning of a trick. Yeah, that's they right. taught us the middle of a trick. Yeah. They taught us the end, but they never taught us all three. You yeah. know? So uh, it really would be a lousy. Well, both of us are. You know? Maybe one day I'll uh, open my hand, get your attention, ask, are you watching closely? Maybe a magic word or two. And then I'll be gone. How do you get so famous then, eh? Magic. Oi! <laughs> oh, no, get back here! Thank you! You asked, I remember I did the same. I said, you know, because we've got kids, I said, you know, most of our life, social life over the next 10 years is going to be kids' parties. Give us a yeah. trick. Yeah. Give us something. And they wouldn't... I got nothing. Nothing? I got nothing either. There was some bubblegum trick they promised me, but they never actually taught me that. Really? At all. So, what is it? <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's about the extent of it for me. Here's the one I learned. That's right? what I, that's what I came out with. Oh, that good. was good, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, <laughs> that's all that we've come out with. Yeah. Next. What were the challenges of filming Magic? Um, were you able to draw upon your work on the stage for this role? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Um, well, my characters are more, uh, more of a natural. I suppose showman, fair to say. I think fair oh, to say yeah, not no. as good a not as good a magician. Right. I've got the magic down, <laughs> yeah. but I've got no idea what to do on stage. How to communicate yeah. what I'm doing. And you are a brilliant showman. With average who absolutely can bring people in, draw them in. Yeah. And you can do that yourself. I mean that was the truth, and that is the difference between the two of us. My guy was a uh NG was a great performer. I said, I don't want to get caught up in being from the 1900s, I don't want to look exactly like that because I figured it'd probably be a little bit over gestured, you know. Yeah. But I wanted to have a slightly otherworldly sort of kind of other time sort of quality to it. But he showed me all those great videos of Channing Pollock, and Channing Pollock was this um, magician who, even though he was in the 50s, he always wore the black tie, and all like he was from the 90s, incredibly mm. cool, calm, 
at ease with himself. He actually later became a movie star in France or something. But I suppose that's the, that was the style I wanted to have. But I, I, I think it's fair to say having been on stage made that easy for me. Yeah. Um, except those bloody doves. I had to bring yeah, in right. those doves and I had to... Well, children hey, and hey. animals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was fun. Peter Christian, unscripted. One thing, uh, one thing I did, like, in prep, you know, because the, the movie, as Michael Caine so eloquently put it, it's a movie you don't want to take a piss during, right? right. Because you need to be watching every... You don't want to miss He's one beat He's not beat talking about the actors in the movie. No. So <laughs> as an audience, you, as don't, an audience, want you don't want to leave to take a piss. That's better. Yeah. Um, but it does jump around in time, like from the future to the past, right? So for me, what I did was, you know, how our characters had the diary. I wrote out the diary to make sense of it. How did you... Yeah. Like, what's your process in terms of? I did shot a chart. I did a chart because I mean we can't give you away did? a whole lot of. No. There's an awful lot with this movie that we can't talk about. Yeah, good point. For interview reason. Yeah. And um, but I did it. I did do a chart because uh, in the, in the momentum and there was a great deal of momentum with the filming of this, which was intentional from Chris's point of view. Uh, I just didn't want to get lost about these details, which I can't really go into any more detail than that about, yeah. uh, to keep it clear about where I was at each different point, uh, et cetera. Yeah. And I kind of went through that chart with Chris ahead of time. Yeah. And then you kind of scrap it, but it's good just to get that kind of cemented in your head. Because yes, it's a movie which really does involve immersion completely as yeah. an audience member. You know, you have to stick with it. You have yeah. to pay attention oh, yeah. uh, to what is going Because all the clues on. are there. And they're there, but the, what I love about it is that in the same way that when I've read the script first, I wanted to read the script straight away again. Yes. Because what you realize by the end of it is not only, not only are you watching a movie about magicians and their rivalries, you know, and it's not so much about magic tricks. It's not yeah. really about showing that, except for this yeah. one particular one, which causes the rivalry between the two of us. But that the entire movie itself yeah. is amazing yes yeah. cue to christian in 1998 you did velvet gold mine based on david bowie's ziggy stardust album what was it like to actually work with bowie in the prestige it would have been fantastic <laughs> to have worked with bowie it would have been fantastic to have met bowie but i didn't do either he didn't even meet no, him didn't even meet him no your mum's going to be very no, upset. All the, she's going to be very upset. I remember I saw, I saw a quote where you were telling people. Did that, I tell people? Something about, Sorry. Yeah. My mum felt that I was finally in a, in a proper movie because David <laughs> Bowie was in it. Yeah. But no, it, that, was, that was a real shame. I would have loved to have met him he's, and worked with him. You know, but uh, that was all you. Yeah. He's unbelievably, like, disarmingly nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I know that I expected him to be an asshole or anything, but I think... You know, he's got such a mystique about him. He's just very down to earth. And well, he's the man who came fell to earth, isn't he? You know, so you expect him to exactly. be somewhat alien-like. I was sitting with him uh, by about the second day. You know, we were getting on really well, and I got over the fact that he was David Bowie. And uh, I told him how in 1981 I had a ticket for his... Did I tell you this? I had a ticket for his uh, concert in 1981 when he came to Sydney, and it was 20 bucks, and I remember it because it was like half a year's pocket money. And I went to school that day, and it was sold out concert, and this guy in year 12, senior, said... Uh, I'll give you 50 bucks for the ticket. Oh, and you scalped it? And I scalped it. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him this. Right. And I thought, oh, you know, and he goes, so you're that kind of guy. Right. right. And I thought, have we got any more questions? Christian or you? Okay. Who would win? There it is. <laughs> well, how comes I get to ask it of him? Because he's obviously going to answer, guess who. Well, no, but if I'm, he asked me, I would answer. I'm happy, guess mate. If you're who, happy. Who would win in the ultimate showdown? Wolverine. I'm happy Batman. to open it to the room. How about we leave it to, uh, you know, Come on, 15 man. years down track yeah. when both of our careers are nothing. <laughs> We're doing dinner theatre somewhere. All right? Fantas, yeah. Then, then we'll come back and we'll revive a Batman versus Wolverine scenario. No, even better. It will be straight to video, but people can... People can make get the, the answer to that question at that point. But even better, if, we re if our careers that. are really in the toilet, let's actually just fight each other. Well, let's right like, now, we'll set it up. Let's just get No, we'll go on the WWF tour, and I'll go out right. in the Wolverine gear, and you go out in the Batman gear, and we'll just fight each other. Sounds good. What do you think? All right. <laughs> it sounds like a great idea, Hugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, mate. Um, thanks, Christian. Thanks, Movie Phone. And uh, thanks to uh, you guys from all over the world for sending in your questions. And uh, stay tuned. You, you want to say the last line? I know you do. Oh, we can be, right. we can be like yeah. co hosts of Entertainment Tonight, you and I. I, I don't want to feel like the Elson twins. <laughs> <laughs> Please check so, out our movie, The Prestige. Brilliant. <laughs> Are you happy? Oh. Oh, that was so bad. Thing, isn't it? Huh? It's weird though. It is a weird thing. Because I feel like I feel like I know you too well to be sitting and asking these questions. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So that's the thing. Because right? it's like you, you 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 do these questions with people that you don't know very well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Man of mystery. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs>